everybody. I am so happy that you came back to join us again in the year 2022. Uh, I am happy that you're here and, and hope that you are in good health and that you are being blessed. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we say thank you. Thank you for bringing us to a new year. Thank you for hearts and minds that desire to study your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for being sovereign. We ask, as always, that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So, it is great to be seen in a new year. And with a new year, we are starting a new article. We are starting article number 13, a gospel church. And our author writes, we believe that a visible church of Christ is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the ordinance of Christ governed by his laws and exercising the gifts and rights and privileges invested in them by his word, that its only scriptural officers are bishops, pastors, and deacons whose qualifications, claims, and duties are defined in the epistles to Timothy and Titus. And so our scripture today is coming from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13. And I will be reading from the NIV version, which reads, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Suthanus to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no division among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, from, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So, in these verses, Paul is writing this letter to the church that is in Corinth, which was established by him on his second missionary journey where he spent a year and a half. Then later on, while he was in Ephesus on his third missionary journey, Paul received some disturbing reports uh, 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 about some distasteful goings on in the church. The city of Corinth was a cosmopolitan city. It was a kind of hub where all kinds of people came together. And, and so to better understand when I say uh, distasteful goings on, I think it would be helpful to first give some background information on Corinth, about the city and, and the culture of Corinth from which the people of the church came from. The, the people of the church came from in the midst of the culture, in the midst of the city of the church, uh, of the uh, 
well, the church is in the city and the people came from the city. So the city sat on a small sliver of land that sat between two bodies of water. And in my mind, it, it, it's like, it, it's a type of land bridge. Uh, I read that sometimes ships would come in on one side of the land, unload their cargo, then pull their ships across the land to the other side, and, and then just continue on their, on, on their route. The city of Corinth was a major metropolis in the Roman Empire, which means that the people from all over the Mediterranean world came together in Corinth. And because of its location, Corinth was a key to, tra to the trading world. It received heavy traffic by land. It received heavy traffic by sea, which made it a perfect place for the gospel to be introduced. Paul would always look for perfect places. He would look for places like this to set up the church and so that it would be in the most strategic place to reach the most people. And Corinth fit that bill. It was a hustling and bustling city full of merchants and, and it was a melting pot of different cultures. There was mostly a mix of Jews, Greeks, Romans, and Orientals, and they all brought different lifestyles, different values, and they also brought different gods with them. Along with this hodgepodge of people came all sorts of religious beliefs, all sorts of, of different lifestyles, different values, different cultures. And over the years, Corinth became known for its widespread of prostitution. There were temples dedicated to Aphrodite, Neptune, and other gods, little G-O-D-S, that were a huge part of their culture. Aphrodite was supposed to be the goddess of sensual love and pleasure. And, and supposedly, there was a thousand prostitutes that served at her temple. In fact, the Corinthians incorporated sex with their temple slaves as part of the worship service. The culture was so outlandish that around the then world, people became, began to nickname loose women as Corinthian women. And the common slang when, when you wanted to go out and party without any boundaries, the common slang was, let's get Corinthianized. Hopefully by now, you're getting an idea of what I mean by distasteful goings on in the church. Corinth was a cesspool of immorality. And I hear somebody say, a cesspool? Yes, let your imagination flow. Yes, even go there. The word Corinthian was used to describe someone who was immoral and excessive in that immorality. Corinth, as in today's Las Vegas, was considered to be the sin city. The Roman Empire was said to have been high on the scale of being morally corrupt, a morally corrupt society, but even they were not as bad as Corinth. And so most people who are familiar with the New Testament are familiar with the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, better known as the famous love chapter, which oftentimes is read at weddings. And, you know, if somebody wanted to answer the question, what is love? They would pull out the 1 Corinthians, 1, the 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to talk about what is love. But in reality, the believers in Corinth were far from loving. The members of the church of Corinth weren't exactly people you'd want your friends or your family to hang around. In fact, they would probably be on your do not call list. It was in this context that one day Paul walked into this city known as Corinth around 51 years or so after the resurrection of Jesus Christ ready to introduce the gospel to a city 
living in darkness, ready to introduce a new religion that most folk had little understanding of what it was about. And not only that, but the Christian teaching went against everything they knew about religion. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I came to know the Lord, I experienced that very thing. Everything that I thought I knew about religion was not in the Bible. A lot of sayings and stuff that we had was not in the Bible. It's not until you actually start to study the Bible that you realize a lot of stuff that we call, quote, gospel is not gospel. Then, as it does now, the teachings of Christ required a radical change from the norms of society. And as is always the case, when you go against the norms, you are going to face not some, not just some challenges, but lots of challenges. It was within this context that the Corinthian church was born. The church at Corinth had many problems, but they all stem from one major thing. The people could not, or rather would not detach themselves from the world they lived in. They were having problems leaving their old way of life that they had lived before Christ. And we all get that because we are still having problems. When we come to Christ, it, 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 it's, we're supposed to make a radical change, an about face, and, and leave the, the old and become brand new. But they, like us, were bringing the world into the church. And it goes without saying that when you bring the world into the church, you also bring the world's problems into the church. The, the city, the people, and the problems of Corinth, of the Corinthian church, was have, that they were having in the first century is the same problems that the church is having in the 21st century. You would think by now we would have gotten it right, but we haven't. Paul spent a year and a half in Corinth when the church was established. And then from reading the two letters that are recorded, it seems that he wrote at least four letters to the Corinthian church. The first letter uh, from the city of Ephesus that he mentioned in 1 Corinthians 5 and 9. So it stands to reason that he's, if he's mentioning another letter in 1 Corinthians, then a letter was written before 1 Corinthians was written. And, but that letter is not part of the letters, the Pauline letters. And then later on, after writing that letter, the first letter, Paul receives a report from folk in Chloe's house and, and about conflicts in the church. And there was also, there may have also been a delegation from the church who brought him questions from the congregation. And so Paul wrote 1 Corinthians that we know to respond to those reports and inquiries. And he also sent Timothy to try and solve some of their problems, but that didn't work. So Paul made a second visit to the church. He visited, his, his second visit didn't go over well, and he left with a broken heart. And if you read uh, uh, some of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, you find out that, that he did write a second letter. And, but it didn't go over well, and he left with a broken heart. Then he wrote a third letter, which is also not recorded, and then finally, Paul received good news about the church, and he wrote a fourth letter, which is 2 Corinthians, to prepare them for his third visit. So you, you see that, that he spent a lot of time with Corinthians, with the church at, at, at Corinth. One commentary said that between the time Paul spent in Corinth and all the letters he wrote, we may know more about the Christians at Corinth than we know about any other New Testament, any other church in the New Testament. The church of Corinth, the church at Corinth, could have been called by any of our names, any of our church names today. Even though the letter is encouraging and highly applicable to us as believers in today's time, 
at the time of Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, the church was a hot mess. They were far from the loving body of believers that we would expect to read about in the Bible. The believers were in a downward spiral of sin. It, they were having a hard time because of what was going around, what was going on around them. They were bringing that stuff in the church. For those who believe that the Bible is filled with good upstanding folk that do no wrong, you should really read your Bible. Because in it, you will find the lives of everyday people just like us with the same problems that we have as individuals and as a body of Christ. With that as a backdrop, let's dive into our verses. But for now, I need you to hold that thought until we meet the next time. So join us next time as we get into our Article 13, A Gospel Church, and dive deep into the Church of Corinth and kind of see how they are like us. Thank you for joining. Go out and have a wonderful day. Love you. Goodbye.